passing ballot question three would give transportation network drivers the right to form unions or driver organizations, allowing them to collectively bargain with companies like Uber and Lyft. These companies would be required to negotiate on wages, benefits, and working conditions if the law passes. The law would not require drivers to join a union. However, if a driver organization is formed, it could represent all drivers in negotiations with these companies. Companies, on the other hand, would be allowed to form multi-company associations to represent them during the bargaining process. Only drivers who complete more than the median number of rides in the past six months would be considered active drivers, and only they would participate in union activities. For a driver organization to be recognized as the exclusive bargaining representative, it would need support from at least 25% of these active drivers. The reality is that 80% of the trips um, are done by drivers that are working full time. That means that this is their primary source of income to take care of their families. And right now they're facing the rea- uh, having to work up to 70 hours a week just to make ends meet. Uh, the attorney general, uh, recent settlement with these, uh, with Uber and Lyft, um, is a start at trying to set basic standards in this industry, but, um, it doesn't account for all the out of pocket expenses, uh, these drivers have with their car maintenance, insurance, gas, and tolls. And it doesn't account for all their work time, given that doesn't account for the time in between rides when they're waiting to, to get another ride. If negotiations stall, the law provides for mediation or arbitration to resolve disputes. The proposed law also requires the arbitrator to consider whether drivers are being paid enough to avoid relying on public benefits. So what does this mean for drivers? If passed, this law would give drivers the ability to collectively bargain for their wages and benefits with the companies they work for.